Hey guys, it's Cooper Rich here from Kick It to Scoot. I am the sole admin of AFL information, trade rumors, and results. You want to be part of the show, Kick It Scoot? Send through your questions through the Facebook link, which I'll attach every show on the post. And if you want to email me at aflinfolive at gmail.com, send through your questions and you may feature on the show and be answered your question from yours truly, Cooper Gretch, for free. Yes, for free. If you want to be on the show, as I said, send it through and I'll get back to you. Go Saints. Too easy this is. Kick it to Scoops. Hello everyone and welcome to Kick It to Scoops. I'm your host, Cooper Gretsch, the sole admin of AFL information trade rumours and results. We have a very, very loaded show for you guys today with a huge announcement who will be revealed at the end of the show. But I'm going to give you one hint right now. You can guess as many times as you want in the comments section down below uh, with your guesses. The huge announcement is this. The tease is this. Now, my next guest is... Well, let's just say you would want to be a fly on the wall in this conversation. You know what I mean by that? Leave your comment, comments down below and leave your guesses and I'll reveal the actual guest name and their, what they do at the end of the show. Hope you guys enjoy that little tease of my next guest who will be on the show next week in full. Now, also on the show, we've got the world famous segment, Scoops Goes Bang on Andrew Bogut, the drama with Andrew Bogut, the online trolls and journos not giving me credit when they should. I want to go through some best 22s for next year. 2022 best 22s. Now, I said last week that I would start doing these from this week onwards. So for the first two clubs today, I'm going to go through are the Carlton Footy Club and the North Melbourne Football Clubs. I've got their best 22s for next year. Now, I know people want to say, oh, the draft hasn't happened yet. But I'll, I'll do them again after the draft. So more than likely, though, the draft days, uh, provided they're not top 10 or 20 picks, will probably not be in the starting team. But we'll, do, we'll worry about that when we come to that. And to go through draft talk, also including my top 20 rankings, which I posted on the Facebook page the other day. Um, and I'll go through that in detail as well. Uh, we already mentioned the announcement coming at the end of the show. And merch Cameo, you want me on Cameo, head to cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. Merch, merch is available. But if you want a t-shirt or a hoodie or an expensive item or a non-drinking item or not a mug, not a stubby holder, not a sticker, if you want a t-shirt or hoodie before, well, for Christmas, you need to put your orders in before early to mid-November, guys. I'm putting the dates out there right now. The date in particular will come to that date when we need to. But if you want a t-shirt or hoodie, you've got until early to mid-November to put your orders through. Otherwise, you, A, you're not guaranteed to get it before Christmas, and B, they probably will be sold out by then anyway. So if you want a t-shirt or hoodie, top of mind, that's on the website, I suggest you get into it pretty, pretty soon. Uh, stickers, there's still stickers on there. Stubby holders on there. Mugs is currently, I don't know, as of this recording, there is four mugs available. So if you want your mug, your Scoops mug, well, there's only four left as of this recording. So if you want it, you know what to do. And guys, please leave a like to this YouTube video. Helps out the channel a lot. And of course, I've never really mentioned this, but I should mention it more often, but I keep forgetting. Subscribe to the channel. Let your friends know about this channel. You Put your notifications on so you'll never miss a live Q&A if I do any. Probably that will start to slow off now with the footy done and the trade period done. But... You're going to miss, you want to be a part of the live Q&As 
uh, and this kick it, these Kick It The Scoops episodes, uh, you know what to do. Subscribe, put the notifications on so you will never miss an episode. Uh, and the episode next week will be on Thursday also. But the weeks after, there'll be to be, to be determined. But guys, let's start off with the world famous segment, Scoops Goes Bang! Right. Uh, banging on about a lot of things today. And the first thing I'm going to bang on about is that Bogan, Andrew Bogut. Now, Bogut, as uh, people will say, oh, Cooper and him are in a Twitter war, Twitter war uh, call it whatever you like. Um, but look, everyone knows he's an anti vaxxer. He can deny it all he wants. And I've got some quotes from his interview with Dwayne Russell on SEN yesterday. Dwayne, you are a legend. Put down the hashtag. Hashtag thank you, Dwayne. Thank you, Dwayne Russell. Uh, in the comments section below, Dwayne, you're a legend. I'll get to those comments in a second from Dwayne and uh, the exchange with Bogan on SEN. But the Twitter war he had with me. Now, I put out a comment because he's an anti vaxxer, Bag and Dan Andrews, uh, whinging and uh, pretty much saying that New South Wales are the gold standard, which is exceptionally bullshit. Uh, anyway, I pretty much said that, you know, he, his comments is embarrassing. I said, who cares how many accounts they have? Because he was bagging an account that was fact-checking him. I said, who cares how many accounts they have? You spew b- bullshit and negativity. Go shoot some hoops in New South Wales because, as I said again, kissing the ass in New South Wales, loving that Dommy and Gladys when she was there. Anyway, so I said, go shoot some hoops in New South Wales. Pretty respectful, no swearing, no mocking, no nothing. And he says to me, eat a cheeseburger. That is very fucking disrespectful from an absolute flog of a person. I don't give a shit. People want to say, oh, he was a pick one in the NBA draft, all this blah, blah, blah. He was a great buzzer puller. So just because you get a blue tick next to your name on social media does not give you the right to, A, think you're intelligent, intelligent, because he's not, he's unintelligent. Um, And just because you're a professional sports player doesn't mean you're a smart person, which clearly he's shown that he's not. Uh, a, if you're an anti-vaxxer, for starters, you're an absolute flog. 99.9% of you can get vaccinated. So if you're an anti-vaxxer, you're a fucking, you're a waste of space. You seriously, um, if you've got a medical condition, that's completely understandable and fine. But if you're an anti-vaxxer, well, then you get sick and uh, you get gravely ill. Well, don't come crying when you got it. Like some people have, were anti-vaxxers, got really sick in hospital. Now there's telling people to get it, which is the right message. But should never been in that scenario in the first place. Just get vaccinated, God's sake. Anyway, he says eat a cheeseburger. And I said, how disrespectful are you body shaming me? Go F yourself, idiot. And then he says, side of fries too. Now, he'll say, oh, well, you did just insult him. Well, that's after he insulted me. And I'm not going to go laying down and cop shit from someone, especially someone like that. And he says, side of fries. Well, I said, and I said, keep being disrespectful, you moron. And then he calls me a banana. Saying, you started with the disrespect. No. Well, no, I didn't. I didn't mock someone's weight i didn't call you a flog i didn't call you nothing like that you pretty much insulted my weight and told me to go eat a cheeseburger and a side of fries extra large meal all this bullshit he went through and then i said did i body shame you and he says no neither did i um dumbass telling me to eat a cheeseburger he's not body shaming are you blind you're an absolute bogey and then anyway it went on and on and on for a while pretty much i said that he's an anti-vaxxer uh, to get your facts right regarding Dan Andrews' reasons for freedom to the next week or so is because of reaching vaccine targets. But some dumbass like you clearly can't comprehend that. Not all sm- sport people are smart, as I mentioned, just because they play professionally. This is great. Now you can go to the gym after your cheeseburger, win win. Well, the only win you copped is absolutely nothing. Cooper won, Bogan none. Uh, well, it was Cooper over five in the end, but anyway, Bogan none. Uh, it just pretty much proves that he's an idiot and doesn't know any. Get your facts right, dickhead. Uh, anyway, he went on and on and on and on and on and on and on. And then when I said, are you going to get your anti vax I have I been locked up. He didn't want to respond after that. What a surprise. Now, he then was on radio yesterday with Dwayne Russell uh, on SEN. And I loved Dwayne's comments towards him. So I'm going to read you some of the quotes that Bogut was asked about. Kyle Irving, who's apparently not an anti vaxxer who has to fork out millions in the mist. Ha, 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 bad luck. No sympathy for you again whatsoever. Now, I'm just getting it up in front of me. Now, here we go. Um, Dwayne 
was speaking to Andrew Bogut about Kyle being an anti-vaxxer. And Bogut says, and I quote, there's some things people have no idea about. Hmm, you talking about yourself, dickhead? I think you are. Anyway, then Dwayne Russell continued to make comments towards Bogut about the vaccine, and I loved it. What Dwayne said uh, was great. Now, some of his famous football calling moments are great, but this was top-notch from Dwayne. Pretty much going a Bogut saying about uh, saying that the vaccine's the right thing to do. Russell was saying that he's fully vaccinated, and I loved it. And then this quote uh, was so funny, so, so good. When Dwayne asked him about the vaccination, then Bogut had no comeback because he's a dickhead trying to say he's pro-vax. He's not pro-vax and he's not anti-vax or bullshit. Yes, you are anti-vax. Anyway, he says, I know I'm in, this is Bogut to Dwayne, I know I'm in the minority regarding vaccination, but dot, 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 dot. Whoa, uh, Bogut, Bogut, you admitted you're a fucking idiot and all people are doing the right thing in the minority, yourself included, are not. So you just essentially said, you, you admitted you're in the minority because, oh, I wonder why you're in the minority because you're an idiot. Just because you're a basketballer, professional basketballer, doesn't mean you're smart at all. Bogut, lift your game. Cooper won, Bogut none. Online trolls, it kind of coincides with this Bogut talk. Simply this, right? You don't like my stuff, fine. You don't want to watch my stuff, fine. But don't come to my channels, insult my appearance, insult my body shape, body size, do them basically what Bogut did. Now you've got plenty of pricks coming at me. I'll eat a cheeseburger trying to be like Bogan. Uh, Bogut, Bogan, same thing. Um, you know, and you want to be like him? You're just like him, an absolute tosser. Get off my channel. I appreciate all the loyal people on here. People say that I'm whinging. I have a right to stand up for myself, and people like Bogut can fuck off to New South Wales. Go kiss ass with Dominic Perichet or whatever you want to call his name. I don't give a shit what his last name is either. Bring back Gladys. That's all I'll say. Yeah, you hear me saying that? Bring back Gladys. This Dominic guy must be pretty bad if I'm saying that, right? Yeah, he is. He's a disgrace. Anyway. To trials online, don't like my stuff, fine. Don't comment negativity in me, piss off. I've got plenty of thousands upon thousands of loyal followers. So to people that want to troll me, get off my channel, get off my YouTube, hiding behind a fake account too, trying to mock me, saying threatening remarks to me, get off my channel. Thank you. To the good people, though, I appreciate you. To the trolls, lift your f***ing name. Journo's not giving me credit. Now, we had this talk last week with Cal, who I... We've always said does a great job, and he still does a great job. There's a few counterpart uh, colleagues at uh, the AFL.com.au range and other sides, Herald Sun. Um, I like to copy what I'm saying. Now, people say, oh, Cooper, how do you know they seen what you said? Trust me, they see my stuff. How do I know? Because a few of their colleagues in the past who are former there and currently there have said they see some of my stuff. Now, I'm not granted they might not see everything, but... They say, oh, Cooper, they didn't see it. Well, okay. Well, if I had screenshotted it and tweeted it to them and they, they, it says they've seen it, don't tell me that they didn't see it. So they could have then, if they seen it, the tweet, which they would have, they are like, okay, yep, no worries. I'll have to credit him because he did post it first. Honestly, if you didn't see it first, fair enough. But if I've sent you a screenshot proving that I sent it, posted something before you, like the Luke Bruce thing or whatever, same thing. There's Tom Campbell, St. Kilda, link to now. I did post that in the comment section. Um, then I posted it to the journo that is involved in this, and he didn't want to acknowledge me. Get your acknowledge me, I'll acknowledge me T-shirts on the website for twenty five dollars. Pretty good bargain, folks. Me, uh, that's something that these journos don't do. They want accreditation. Some will message me, go, hey, 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 you got to credit me for this or something along that lines or that type of tone. I'm sure no worries. So sorry, I didn't do it. Or sorry, I forgot. I instantly change it. Them, no response. And if they do respond, they're not changing their stance on crediting me. So if you don't want credit from now on or any other time, do it yourself. Lift your game, some of these journalists, not good enough. Some of you do great work, I'm not discounting that. But don't tell me to credit you if you're not going to credit me. And don't tell me that they, you don't see it because you do. Maybe you don't see it on my page directly. But if I post you a screenshot saying, hey, 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 I posted this exclusively, well then credit me and acknowledge me. now. Hope you guys enjoyed that long, extensive <laughs> scoops. Joe's Bang, probably one of the best ever, if you ask me. And hashtag 
Thank you, Dwayne Russell, in the comments section. Leave your thoughts down below. Not only about screws, I spam anything else I go through today. Now, I'm going to go through the 20, my 2022 best 22s. Try saying that three times fast. 2022 best 22s for 2022. For Carlton and North Melbourne. Now, the first club I'm going to go through today is the Carlton Football Club's best 2022. Now, obviously, the Blues they had an active trade period that brought in Lewis Young, Adam Chera, George Stewart. They have had some interest in Jared Brander as a delisted free agent. They were interested earlier. They got Lewis Young, so they may head to a different path. But regardless, I'm going to go through the Carlton's 2022 best 2022 for me. Now, here we go. We've got it right in front of me from the back line. And you will be able to see this on your screen. If you're not, if you can't, you'll hear me right now. <clears throat> Mike Carlton, 2022, best 22. From the back line, the pockets, Sam Doherty and Nick Newman. Full back line, Liam Jones. The flank, halfback flank is Adam Sard and Zach Williams. The centre half back when we got Jacob Wiedering. The wing is Ed Kerno and Jack Nunes. Doctor, doctor, give me the news. Uh, Georgie Hewitt in the centre because you'll be a, like a tagging type of defensive mid. Uh, on the half forward line, Jack Silvani and Paddy Cripps. Centre half forward, Charlie Kerno. Forward pockets, Josh Honey and Matt Owies. Full forward, the Coleman Medal leader, a winner from 2021, Harry Mackay. Now the Ruckman, you could say. Mm, not so sure, mate, with your Ruckman. Well, that's an area they're going to look at, and they were unable to get a Ruckman in the trade period. Lewis Young's a pinch hitter there, but Mark Pitney is their best Ruckman that they've got. Him and Tom DeConnie are the only two they've got. Tom DeConnie's ideally not a full, uh, a full-time Ruckman, maybe pinch hitter. Regardless, we've got Mark Pitney as a Ruck, and the two mids, Rovers and Ruck Rover and Rover, Sammy, Sammy Walsh and the new gun recruit, the 22-year-old Adam Chera. Interchange now, a bit debatable. I've got Zach Fisher, Jack Martin, David Cunningham, and Tom DeConning. Now, the emergencies I've got are Lewis Young, Paddy Dow, Maddie Kennedy, Will Setterfield, Lockie Fogarty, Lockie Plowman, Caleb Martrek, we have rest most here, and Mitch McGovern. Blues fans, or any fans of any club, what's your thoughts on my Carlton 2022 best 22? He'll say, got Paddy Cripps on the half four line. Well, you've got Hewitt and Chera in the midfield. Cripps plays a bit of four now anyway. And to make that four line a bit stronger with him and Silvani Mackay, so, uh, Cripps, Kerno, Silvani Mackay, the two small fours of Honey and Owies, who I thought are pretty, pretty solid players. Chera in that midfield with Walsh and Stewart and Kerno and Nunes and Fisher and Martin and Cunningham, mixture of. And he got a few inside mids in the emergency. He's got Dow, or he's not really an inside mid, but Paddy Dow. Then you got the two inside mids and Kennedy in centre field. Uh, I don't know Mitch McGovern in. I don't see his place for him in that side, to be honest. It's Kerno and Mackay into Conning. So if any of those three got injured, I probably still wouldn't bring in Mitch McGovern, to be honest. I'd probably just stick with two-prong attack and Cripps would then play as the third tall forward. Uh, so Blues fans, let me know your thoughts down below. Mike Carlton, 2022, best 22. And what changes would you make from that squad or from that 22? Any plays you add in? And Lewis Young, if I didn't mention, was an emergency as well. Uh, right. Again, leave your thoughts down below. We'll now move on to my 2022 best 22 for North Melbourne Football Club. Now I'm just getting it up in front of me right about now. Here we go. <clears throat> my 2022 best 22 for North Melbourne Football Club from the back pockets, Luke McDonald and Aiden Call. Fullback, Ben McKay. The halfback flankers, Aaron Hall and Jack Zeeble. Centre halfback, Josh Walker. The wingers, Jed Anderson and Taryn Thomas. Their centreman, Luke Davies Juniaki, or as people like to call him, LDU. The half forward line, Jaden Stevenson and the soon to be number one draft pick, Jason Horn Francis. People say, oh, Cooper hasn't been officially drafted yet, but that will happen. They pretty much suffered me to that. Centre half forward, Callum Coleman Jones. Not in the ruck. Forward pockets, Curtis Taylor and Canton Zerha. Curtis Taylor, highly underrated in my eyes. And the full forward, Nick Larkey. The ruckman, Todd Goldstein. The Rovers, 
and Ruck Rover, Ben Cunnington, and the best and fairest winner, Jai Simpkin. Highly underrated also. Now, the interchange. Tom Powell, Kane Turner, Jared Pollock, and Bailey Scott. Now, the emergencies I have are Will Phillips, Tristan Cherry, a two Boston Valagi, Flynn Perez, and Kyron Hayden. Ruse fans, let me know your thoughts down below of my 2022, my 2022, best 2022. Oh, I said that wrong. My best, my 2022, best 22 of the Ruse. Ruse fans, fans of other clubs, leave your thoughts down below. Now, originally I was going to have Trent Dumont in, but he got cut the other day, which is terrible in my eyes, Ruse, Brady Rawlings. And then Sean Atley, is that how you treat loyal servants? Brady, mm, interesting. Will Phillips, it could be one that mixes in, but you got your uh, Pollock and Tom Powell and uh, Davis Uniac and Jed Anderson, Taron Thomas, Dan Cunnington, Josh Simpkin. A few of those players that I just mentioned can play a bit versatile and a bit of a speed in them, but the other, other guys are more inside mids. And Will Phillips is kind of in that same boat, so he's one that misses out. And a two, well, he's there as the... Um, Versatile backman wingman type, um, mainly as a backman, so he's probably the next one of the next few mids. Uh, backman chosen, as with Kyron Hayden, the defensive role. Flynn Perez, that young player before his knee was going pretty well. And Tristan Cherry at the moment is the backup to the backup. Ruckman, backup to the backup to the backup. Interesting, eh? Hmm, coincidental, what a name. Hope you guys enjoy that. Roos fans, Blues fans, clubs of fans of other clubs, leave your thoughts down below. Those 2022. Best 2022s for me. Now, draft talk. Now, I'm going to go through my draft, well, my top 20 rankings. Now, apologies, guys. My screen's just come off for a second because I am just getting it back up in front of me. But basically, I have some of these plays in the rankings. And people go, Cooper, uh, you got this guy picked five, so he's going to pick five. It's just who I think is the next best choice. Now. One news I just want to mention too, uh, while I'm mentioning, uh, while I'm scrolling through my uh, pages here, uh, if you want any audio messages, audio audio messages on the show, which I'll get to one shortly, email me at aflinfolive at aflinfolive at gmail dot com. If you want any questions, want your questions answered on the show, Brady Rawlings and Glenn Laugh also confirmed that Adelaide former Crow Tom Lynch will be added to the rookie list doing a Tyson Goldsack type role mainly play VFL and be a developmental coach, which is a good move, to be honest. Now, don't worry, guys. You'll see my face on the screen in just a second. If you can't see it already, you will in a sec. I'm just getting my list up in front of me. Uh, where are we? Right. I'm back, guys. I'm back. Don't you worry. Now, I'm going to now go through my top 21. I just said top 20. It's Actually, top 21 AFL draft rankings for this year's crop. Now, again, I want to reiterate, this is not a phantom draft. This is who I think will be my personal top 21 rankings. If pick one, it's not pick one. The first best player for me is Jason Horn francis The second best is Nick Dacos. Third best, Finn Callahan. Fourth best, Ben Hobbs. Fifth best, Sam Darcy. Sixth best, Mac Andrew. Seventh best, Matthew Johnson. Eighth best, Marcus Winhanger. Ninth best, Josh Ward. Tenth best, Machido Owens. Eleventh best, eleventh best, Sam Butler. Twelve, Tyler Sonsi. Thirteenth, Josh Goda. Fourteenth, Josh Gibbers. Fifteenth, Jaya Miss. Sixteenth, Josh Rochelle. Seventeenth, Neil Erasmus. Eighteen, Arlo Draper. Nineteen, Josh Sin. Twenty, Campbell Cheeser. 21, Toby Conway. Now, some people say, Coop, Coop, Coop. Who the hell are these guys? What positions are they? Whatever. Well, don't you worry. I've got that for you. Jason Horn Francis is a mid forward. Nick Dacos is a forward mid. Finn Callahan is a mid. Ben Hobbs is a mid. Sam Darcy is a key forward. Mac Andrews a ruckman. Uh, Matthew Johnson's a mid. Marcus Winghanger is a mid. Josh Ward is a mid. Machito Owens is a mid. Sam Butler's a mid forward. Tyler Sonsi is a mid. Josh Goat is a mid. Josh Gibbs is, is a backman. Jaya Miss is a mid forward. Josh Trichelli is a small forward. Neil Erasmus is a uh, utility player. Arlo Draper is a utility player. Josh Sins, a uh, utility player. Campbell Chase is 
a mid forward. And Toby Conway, Conway, Toby Conway is a ruckman. Now, Mac Andrew and Toby Conway are in the ruck categories. I said now, what a bit more details on them. Uh, I'll go through them a bit more in detail in future weeks. Now, this could change over time. People can go, oh, how could you have Jason on Francis when Nick Dacos could get bitten on pick one? It's a ranking. It's not a phantom draft. I'll do that over before the draft, which is November 23 and 24, 24, 25 uh, in November. So I will do a phantom draft over time, but any particular players you want an opinion on, um, hit me up on the messages on Facebook and the Facebook page. I'll happily go through it in a bit more detail if you want to. But basically, Sam Butler is the brother of Nate, uh, Dan Butler from the Saints. Uh, Mac Andrew has an academy from Melbourne, but with the new rule, that an academy players or NGAs or whatever, if, there's a, if someone wants to select them in the top 20, the club that they're linked to or tied to cannot bid on them. So Melbourne will miss out on him. Uh, different though with the father-sons, with Dacos and Darcy. Darcy the Bulldogs, Dacos the Pies. Uh, Dacos will be a pie, Darcy will be a Bulldog. Uh, yeah, so that's just my rankings. Marcus Winhango and Machito Owens are NGA academies. The Saints are the two players that I mentioned if the – Someone wants to select them in the top 20. The Saints are unable to match it with the new rule, which I don't like. Um, there's a lot of Joshes in the drafts. In my top 21, I think I've got six. Let me count it. You got one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five Joshes. We've got Josh Ward, Goda, Gibbs, Rochelle, and Sin. Uh, a lot of Joshes in the draft. The Saints normally pick up the Jacks. Delisting Jack Loney, I did not like. Uh, which I've shown on my page. Now, that I didn't mention this last week. He actually had – did not play like the last 11 games, and there's a reason why he didn't. He was one game away from triggering an automatic one. You know, they clearly didn't want to keep loans, and uh, hopefully a club like Collingwood or Carlton, GWS, or Bulldogs, who's been linked to the last few years, give Jack an opportunity because he's a good player. He's too good to not be on an AFL list. But yeah, going back to the Joshes, there's five Joshes in my top 2021. 20, uh, Five Joshes in my 21, top 21 of the AFL draft rankings. As I said, if you want any information on any of the guys, leave it in the comments section down below, preferably on the Facebook messages, and I can give you some more details on particular players, their height, uh, the versatility and everything like that, and how they've gone throughout the last year or so. Now, we have one audio messages, one audio message to go through, and, uh, yeah, we'll hear from him right now. G'day, Coops. Uh, Mick here. Uh, long time caller and sure. Well, anyway, um, now I had a quick question, mate, just in regards to um, your uh, Scoops medal for the finals. Either you or me are really bad at maths because um, I'm still trying to work it out. Because um, at the end of, so after the preliminary final was played, um, McRae had nine votes and, and uh, Max Gorn had three. And you were saying that he could still win on average votes and I still couldn't work it out because I was thinking even if McRae got none, he would still be averaging over two for the finals. And even if Max Gorn got three in that game in the grand final, then he would have only been averaging two given they played three games. Yeah, you're going to have to explain it to me, mate, because I've just been yeah, just been baffled for the last three weeks. Um, anyway, mate, keep up the good work and uh, yeah, good luck and great punting. Thank you, Mick. Um, good question. Now, I will admit when I make a mistake, and I did make a mistake, and Mick's pointed it out, and a few others have in the past, but Mick did through the audio message, which is why it was played. Uh, yes, Max Gorn, had he polled three, I had said originally, had he polled three in the granny, in my Scripps medal, and McRae had polled none, I, would say, I said that there would be a tie, and the Scripps medal would be McRae and Gorn tied. Well, Gorn in polar vote, so automatically McRae has won, and he's still the right winner. But per average, McRae would have played four games and Gorn would have played three. But even if Gorn had three votes and McRae had none, on average, McRae still would have won. So great question, Mick. Um, you've been debating it for three weeks, been boggling your mind, mate. Well, you were right about that. So the official Reofficialing, officially re-announcing the winner of the Scripps Medal Finals Edition is the winner of the home and away Scripps Medal Edition 
Jackson McRae. Well done, you, Jackson and Mick. Thanks again for your question, mate. Again, guys, if you want any of your questions answered on the show through the audio message, email me at aflinfolive at gmail.com. Guys, if you're not leaving a like on this video, I would like to see the likes go up. We want to get to at least 40, at least 40 for this episode. Now, and of course, subscribe to the channel. Now, it's time for the big announcement. Drum roll, please. Yes. The new, what's new? Don't butcher this, Coops. Scoops, don't butcher it. The new guest on the show next week. I said this is a game changing announcement. I've had Sarah Rolly on, I've had Tom Morris on, I've had Bev on, I've had Johan Yoe Wagner on the show. Well, if you think the guests I've had on are big, which they are, you can get no bigger than this guest. Now I mentioned at the top of the show, you would want to be on you would want to be a fly on the wall in this conversation and knowing who my guest is. Well, the guest on the show next week in full is the new Collingwood Football Club coach, Craig McRae. Yes, you heard me correctly. Craig McRae. His nickname is, nickname is Fly, if you didn't get that reference. So next week on the show, you will, have a, you will see the one-on-one interview with myself and the pop, new Pies coach, Craig McRae. I am so excited to have Craig on the show. Uh, I really appreciate Craig for coming on, uh, which I'll mention again next week. Um, I reached out to Craig. He was happy to come on. And you want to see a sneak peek? You're not, you don't believe me? Well, here's a sneak peek of what you'll see in full next week. Well, let's just say you would want to be a fly on the wall in this conversation. Football club, club coach Craig McCray. Thanks for coming on, Craig. No worries, Cooper. Tell me a bit about yourself. Just fill me in quickly. Yeah, one other man who's currently on your list is Mason Cox, and obviously his future has been questioned. Obviously, with Max Lynch going out, would it be fair to say that he'd be more than likely would stay a pie considering Max Lynch's departure? Oh, we'd like to hope so. Like, um, yeah, I've been deliberate in, in terms of my commentary around Mason because I've had a strong relationship with him for a long time. So I want to separate the emotion from, from you know, what's required for our list. So I've, I've let Derek Kine and, and uh, Graham Wright handle all the negotiations and comments around that. Now it's got to the point where we, um, yeah, we're progressing towards, you know, Mason hopefully staying or the opportunity potentially staying. I think I'll have a stronger say in what, what that looks like. Um, just in terms of positional and, and opportunities. But, um, yeah, I'll still leave the, the contract side to, to the people that are employed to do those roles. Well, guys, did you see that? You didn't believe me. You did not believe me. I had, this is the biggest guest I've had on by far, by far. Craig McCray is a great guy, which you'll see in full next week. I really do appreciate Craig McCray coming on, kick it to scoops. Oh, He's one of many coaches, players, whatever, coming on the show. So really appreciate Craig for his time. Uh, very busy schedule being the coach now, the new coach of the Pies. Uh, again, Craig, I appreciate you for coming on. I really do appreciate it. And hopefully you guys will enjoy that chat in full next week. Craig McRae, the next guest on Kick It The Scoops. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Don't miss out on next week's episode. My full chat with Craig McRae, the new Pies coach. Until next week, everyone. Boy, I'm excited. Till the next one. Until next time, everyone. Have a great one. And most importantly, go to the Saints. And of course, acknowledge me. And while I'm at it, also, you want me on Cameo. Head to cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. Merch. Get all your merch. The acknowledge me tops. I'm going to repeat myself because I'm so excited for you guys to see the chat. The one on one interview with myself and Craig McRae next week, the new Pies coach. Until next week, everyone. Have a great one. And most importantly, Go to the Saints. I'll say it again because I want to. And, of course, I'll say this one more time. Craig does has done it, and every other guest in the past I've had it, I have had has done it. To all of you, acknowledge me.